time for the 10th and final King of the Ring pay-per-view in the WWE. And it's also the first King of the Ring pay-per-view under the WWE name. We were at the Nationwide Arena in Columbus, Ohio, trying to crown the King of the Ring. Spoiler alerts, I'm going to call it Peasant of the Ring because I didn't think the pay-per-view was very good at all. Um, sorry to bust everyone's bubble, but uh, yeah, I thought the build-up was good. I was looking forward to it. I thought we were going to get a great show. I was hyped, went into it, and I really thought it was lacklustre. I really thought it, it was underwhelming, especially the main event. I thought the main event absolutely sucked. Just too long. And I like overbooked matches and stuff, but it was shit, right? There was lots of interference, lots of stuff went down, but I didn't like this. I don't think the show started that strong, and I don't think it got better. I mean, there were so many mediocre matches in there. It's hard to look at it and pick what match was the best, because I just felt like overall a lot of them were disappointing. Even the King of the Ring final, it just didn't even last that long. It was... Right, we'll get into it, but for me, I expect a lot better. King of the Ring, big pay-per-view. But yeah, for me, big letdown. Yeah, it was a big letdown. In the pre-show beforehand, we had the Hardy Boys taking on Raven and Stevie Richards. I believe this is like one of Raven's last ever matches, so I thought I'd just go What ahead. about me? What about Bin Bag Raven? What about Bin Bag Raven? Uh, spoiler on Raw, it's him against Dreamer and a uh, loser leaves the WWE. Bro. Loser joins TNA match. <laughs> That's pretty much it, ROH. But anyway, we kick off with the pay per view. We have got Rob Van Dam. Well, they do a wee promo, pro like saying, Oh, who's going to be the king of the ring? Brock Lesnar, Rob Van Dam, Chris Jericho, test. Who's going to be the man? And then they show you all the previous winners, but I mean. I'll put it this way. I, I do honestly feel that in terms of a final four, it's a fucking really good, strong final four. It is, yeah. 2001, you'd angle Rhino, Christian Edge. You know, I mean, that's another strong four. Uh, I can't really remember the years before. I remember Billy Gunn won it, like, so, I mean, I doubt... I'm oh, an ass man. I doubt... I mean, just, I'm trying down, to think back. Billy Gunn won it. I doubt the final four was much better oh, than I'm Billy Gunn. I'm an ass man. Down, down, down. I think Rikishi was in it, was it not? Uh, Rikishi, my... Val Phoenix, was he? Out in the time. Hello, right? ladies. Right, anyway, first match. King of the Ring, semi-final. Jericho versus Rob Van Dam. A lot of people... Saying this match was great. I honestly felt it was a little bit disappointing. I think both of these guys are phenomenal. But this wasn't one of their, their better outings in my opinion. I, I, I just thought it was a bit boring. Normally, but I think you should try and start the show with a fast-paced, exciting match. Now, I know I'm not saying these guys aren't fast-paced. But I, I think they tried to have like a, too much of a technical style match and for me I, I thought it was yeah I think of all the matches know, on the card it is the one that can realistically only start the show I mean maybe Brock and Tess could have started the show but it's too See, I Brock's think, almost not, not, he's not like green like but I feel like he can't really start a show I think I would have rather Brock Tess start the show because it was more of a you know two bigger guy it felt like a faster paced uh, hard hitting matchup whereas this one felt more methodical more slow more that technical wrestling style, and I don't think you should ever start a pay-per-view off that way. I, I feel like you want to start the pay-per-view with, you know, a quick, quickish, you know, fast-paced match, which, and I don't think... Yeah, I mean, it. I think Van Damme and Jericho could have gave us a really good fast-paced match, but it's not, it's not what they want. It's not what they wanted. They went for a 15-minute match. It was all right, but they could have had much better, man. Haven't they? I think they have. They have, definitely. Uh, after this match, because of course Van Damme uh, is defeated Chris Jericho. Jericho again, kind of job that like. I mean, ever, champion. I, ever since he became Undisputed Champion, it's kind of went downhill for the guy. I mean, he, his title reign sucked. It, it did, it is what it is. Um, his match against Triple H at Mania, I don't think was that good. I mean, I'd, I'd give it a six, seven, seven at best. I mean, wasn't that great. Um, after that, I mean, he, he, I think the Hell in a Cell match at that stage, arguably the weakest Hell in a Cell match. Would you agree with that? I mean, probably a bit better than Bossman Taker. Like, oh, I forgot. But... I know, I'm not counting Bossman Taker. Fuck that. Part for Bossman Taker. I'd say so, yeah. I think I preferred Kane Mankind on Raw. Nah, because I, yeah. I think I'd that was a better so. one. Definitely. Um, yeah, right. so, yeah, nah, for me, just, I think, and then he's just been doing absolutely nothing. I don't know. I, I don't think Jericho's been, been up too much. And 
We know that Jericho gets moved to Raw sooner or later, so we'll just have to wait and see. But he loses this match. RVD gets interfered by the King after it. King says, is it, who does he want to face next? RVD says, it doesn't matter if it's Test, Brock Lesnar, or even Godzilla, because he's RVD. It's mad to think that this is only four years before ECW, where he's taken on Test and matches. And four years? It feels like it's about fucking 20 years between that. <laughs> It does, doesn't it? Uh, then we cut backstage with Paul Heyman and Brock Lesnar. Heyman addresses RVD's promo. Heyman says that Godzilla is fake, but the next big thing, Brock Lesnar, is, here. is real. He's real. And, um, He's real to me. He, he pumps him up for his match against Test. And uh, you know what? I actually didn't realise this, but before we get into the next match, I don't think Brock Lesnar's been booked strong at all. Literally every match, he needs some sort of outside interference for Heyman. It's like now, the, I'm not saying he would lose, right? Heyman, I don't recall Heyman preventing Lesnar from losing a match, but he sure as well helped him win a match. There is a difference. Oh, yeah. There's a massive difference, right? Heyman, has, uh, as far as I'm aware, has never actually like pulled a referee out or put Brock's foot on the rope. So I'm not saying that Heyman has prevented Brock from, from losing, but... Almost every match, Heyman has been the reason Brock's won. Absolutely, and I, I don't... Like, yeah, it's... And Brock's had good matches up to this point against the likes of RVD and, and Bubba Ray. I think he's had a lot of good matches with Bubba Ray. But it's like... Do you not think... He's had a couple of matches at least with Bubba Ray. Maybe three. At least two. Is it two? I think it's... Yeah, definitely at All right, least well, two. let's say two, right? Do you not think maybe the first one you would have Paul Heyman maybe distract Bubba Ray and that's what cost Bubba... But then in the second one, Brock Lesnar wins fair, clean. Yeah, I know, but... Uh, but both both times, Paul Heyman has played a deciding factor in Brock beating Bubba Ray, and to me, that's just wrong. And if you think about another thing, like, I think his next match is actually against RFD for the title at, uh, what's the paper, next paper for you? can't remember the name yet. Are you depressed or something, mate? No, I'm trying to think here, right? What's it? I can't remember what the next paper for you is. Come for the life of me, not insurrection, but whatever it is, he's against RVD. But then the next one, he's against The Rock. And it just kind of feels like if he's struggling, not struggling, like you say, he's getting help. Big help to beat mid cars. What the fuck will it take to beat The Rock? Well, I'd say upper mid cars, not RVD. Oh, Bubba Ray. All right, okay. Bubba I like, Ray. I like Bubba Ray. I like, no, but I, was, I honestly, apart from when he debuted and he battered all the hardcore division, he right, has he's done the F five on Rikishi and all that stuff. I mean, that was good. But anyway, right, moving on. Test Brock Lesnar. I mean, I mean, a lot of people say Test sucked. I don't think Test sucked at all. I would say Test is in the top ten wrestlers never to win a world title easily. What's that all about? Now he's probably not in the top five, but I, I'd say he's pretty much after that. I mean, would I, I wouldn't. Put him up there with Regal, even though Regal sucks nowadays. Um, is not dead. Scott Hall and all he's that dead. stuff. But all these guys are dead. Uh, he's definitely in the top ten for me. Very underrated. You know, big guy moved well, high impact moves. He's got quite a you know, got a lot of memorable moments in my opinion. I, I think there's David Elbow off the top of the chamber on RVD. That's something that I think will always be remembered in wrestling. It's like holy fuck, that was a crazy spot. You know, and it wasn't oh because he's done a. 450 media splash man it was literally because the impact of the move it was so yeah and no, i like test got a great big boot got a big boot yeah almost takes people's head off and got this kind of confidence swagger he just, he just look, he looks like a badass kind of guy that you know you could have it could be a major player in the company so I, I don't know why it never really worked out for the guy he was always there and then he kind of wasn't there then he was back and Remember Andrew Martin, the punisher on TNA last he lasted about two weeks in TNA and uh and he died. I mean we always we, we fought back in the day. I know it's a bit of a random tangent here, but we fought back in the day that TNA used to sign all the WWE guys, but I mean fucking Tony Khan's just he's stolen TNA's playbook right after him. I know. There was probably there was a there was probably a couple of ex WWE guys that TNA didn't sign. Now you can't say the same about AEW. No. They have signed literally fucking anybody. Even refs. Even people that set up the rings. If you've worked for the E, then Mr. Tony Khan will employ you. If you've worked in the fucking wrestling... I mean, if you sold DVDs at fucking Extra Vision, man, you, you, you've got a job in AEW. DVDs, guys? DVDs? <laughs> Get the $20 brown paperback special. Remember Don, what? Remember Don West and his Don big... Don what? Don what? 
No, remember what? Dom West? What? Remember the paper bag special? You got two t shirts. Um, you got two t shirts, an 8x4, and fucking four DVDs for $20. That's and fuck. back then, the pound was great. So the pound, that was about 12 quid. That was when the pound was strong. We were getting four fucking DVDs, two t shirts, and like a, an 8x4. For twi- yeah, we would go into like HMV and fucking mayonnaise was <laughs> sixty quid. <laughs> you know, like cheapest wrestling DVD pay per view is like twenty five pounds. Uh, unbelievable. But anyway, right back to the test, Brock Lesnar. Right, Brock good match, wins. big ba- big big hard hit match. You know, big impactful moves. That's what you want. Two big guys. Mate, you know what I mean? It looks fucking real. Test hitting big power slams. Brock hitting moves. Test looking like it's about to put Brock away. Brock counters. Brock looks like he's about to put Test away, Test counters. Test hits a massive big boot. And wait, is this not the time is this not the first time that Heyman actually did? Uh, it is, yeah. yeah. Uh, up to this point, I don't think Heyman had done it, but he actually puts I think Heyman he puts, puts the, the leg. Brock's leg on the ropes. Can we confirm that? Is anyone Yeah, I'm willing to confirm that. Yeah, my memory yeah, is pretty good. I, I definitely have. So this was the first time that Heyman had actually, you know prevented Brock from losing and it was a massive big boot then Tess gets some ready goes to hit another one Brock Lesnar counters it hits the F5 and that's all she wrote one two three Brock wins but again this time he, he needed not necessarily had help for Heyman to win but Heyman definitely stopped him from losing I feel losing. like at this point there's just no way Van Damme's beating Brock is there if we're being realistic is there well, not with Paul Heyman at ringside, because he's been the deciding factor so far. That's it. Uh, we cut backstage, though. We've got Bubba Ray. But giving Tess us... looked good. Well, Tess looks strong in defeat here. But we've got Bubba Ray backstage being interviewed here by uh, the coach, Jonathan Coachman. No, I think Tess should have won this. I think he could make an argument Tess should have won it. But I get with the fact the winner gets a title shot. Well, Tess takes on Undertaker at SummerSlam, so it ends all. That's all right, man. It could have been worse, but uh, we've interviews backstage with the Un-Americans, Bubba Ray, giving their thoughts here on the King. Bubba Ray's is short and sweet. Good promo here by Bubba Ray. Yeah, uh, so he basically says, Coachman says, like, you'd be on... And what I liked is, right, you had Coachman... You had Coachman interview the Raw guys, because he's on Raw. And on SmackDown, you... Who was it? Kevin Kelly? No, some job. Or was it Kevin Kelly? All right, but it's some SmackDown guy. So even back here, right, the brand split, they've got the Raw, the Raw interviewer that's interviewing the Raw. And to me, that, that just makes it feel special. That makes you actually believe that there is a brand split and these two these two brands are actually competing against and each in, other. And uh, Bubba Ray's in the Raw locker room. It's all the Raw guys. <laughs> yeah, and then um, they ask him who's he thinks going to win between... He's been in the ring with both RVD and Brock Lesnar, and he says he doesn't fancy RVD's chances. So then we go to... But yeah, he says he wishes he was in the final, but he's not, so he's going to have to make an impact uh, some other way. And I don't think he meant by joining TNA Impact. That was near around T- back here. TNA. The Un-Americans will land storm, and it kind of goes for like a, a passionate promo for Bubba Ray to... He got screwed because we're Canadian. <laughs> Before we address this, so... Do you remember there was a period in wrestling like where everyone thought they were edgy when they just said impact? Not remember like uh, this is probably around like 2010 where people would like debut or, or like, 2000 maybe maybe a bit after that once TNA kind of went to shit and, and like her TNA or higher. No, but remember, do you remember a lot of people in WWE were like I want to make an impact, but they were always like emphasizing the impact. They no. thought you don't. No fucking that's good. That's, that's what that's happened anyway, right? Um. So they go to get the SmackDown locker room's opinions, and, and the jobber guy is say, saying to Lance Storm, or is he saying, oh, it was Christian, wasn't it? Yeah, if you're Christian and Lance Storm like, here. Uh, Christian's first, though, then Lance Storm appears later. He's saying to Christian, like, uh, you know, what, what's your thought on, on no SmackDown competitors, you know, being in the final? Christian doesn't really like it. And then Lance Storm appears, and it's like, you know what else? There's no Canadians in the final. Uh, Lance Storm makes Brock, it. Brock, though, he, he identifies as a Canadian. Yep, our World Cup tournament will be coming soon, and I've got Brock and Team Canada. Is that controversial or what? Could be, but this is, this is this ain't controversial, right? Next up, cruiserweight title. Well, hold on here, let's uh, discuss. This is why you refuse a four minutes, mate. Mine's a four hours, all right? Let's discuss. Oh, let's let's get somewhere in the middle. All right. Okay. I was just champing at the bit to talk about the cruiserweight title match because I love my wee midgets. All right, so back to the midget, the midget Canadian. You love midgets? Yeah. Clip that. Right, so. It, 
What do you make of this uh, Lance Storm promo? I think Lance Storm is up this game. See, see he's still a boring bastard, like, but he's, he's actually cutting decent He's promos. making it work with the heel work. Soon Austin will be coming out with his pillow, just burying him again, like, but... <laughs> but yeah, he just basically goes on to say that this company is prejudiced against Canadians and, you know, um, he says it should have been an all-Canadian final between Jericho and Test, but it's not happening because there's bias and it's proof that the WWE has bias. And then Lance Storm. See Lance Storm. Off. Could you not just imagine Lance Storm wearing his pish attire in like 2009 ECW working matches? I, I totally can imagine context, it. Like, um, I can imagine. Then Storm and, and Storm says him and Christian are going to have to stand up for what's right. Stand up against these biased Americans. Yeah, so, there, you there you go. And yeah. that's it. That's the un-Americans. That's how they were formed. Right here, right now. Test. See, it's What's that all about? It's kind of almost teasing that Jericho would be in the group. And then it? he gets shot to row. Oh, so. Do you think maybe he was supposed to be in the group? Because the group does seem a lot stronger with Jericho. No, the on Americans it. are on row. On Americans. They end up on row. Aye, I know, but. I remember Kane returns. Anyway, spoiler. But anyway, Jamie Noble, Hurricane. Are there anybody's in there for you? Aye, anyway. This match was horrendous. I, I don't know. I, I just thought it, it was all right. No, nah, it was too long. It was fucking too long. It was 12 minutes. And it, nah, I remember watching this. Near, actually, this match was bad and the next match was bad. I don't know. Nadia, we're going to party tonight, Nadia. I just, I haven't, I've not understood this feud. Half of it's been on velocity and half... Like, dun, 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 dun. Hurricane's dun, 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 been getting loud. But well, you, you don't you only, you only find out if you watch Velocity. Do you not know, like Jamie Noble's theme song? Right? Da -na 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 no, that's not it, mate. Is it no? It's like da -na 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 down to down da -na 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 down to down 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 down. Well, you done a shit version of it, mate. I was well, a you, shit. You done like I the, didn't like this. You much. done like the uh, the new version, not to get copyrighted, and I'm doing like the original. You're doing like a remix to try and. Dun, 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 you're doing like the Hulk, dun, you're doing like WWE Hogan's 2002 WWE fucking. Down, 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 down. Anyway, Hurricane has it won. Nidia puts Jamie Noble's foot on the rope after a a horror choke slam, and then Jamie Noble gets a uh, Hurricane in the ring, and he beats him with. What's that manoeuvre called? The Jamie Noble bomb. Is that what it's called? No, I made it up. I can't remember what the it's called. Is it not just a blue folder bolt? Aye. <laughs> That's pretty much what it is. <laughs> no, I mean... I just... All right. I mean, I'm not... Why are the Hardy boys on the pre-show with these two are having a match on the actual card? I don't know. I don't get it. I don't get it, but uh, I don't understand the feud, to be honest. So, Whip... Uh, uh, the Hurricane used to date Nidia... About a million the, fucking... You've been WCW, like. And then they split up, and she wants to ha take his title away from him or something. Not too sure. I don't really get it. I don't think the match was that bad. He wants to bury it. Look, when I say this paper for you is shit, I didn't really mean it. What I meant was it just wasn't good. It was like Luster. It was nothing good like about it. It was alright. It was like the most average fucking thing you could get. All right, let's, let's quickly go. Right, let's quickly go through the first three matches. What are you giving them in terms of ratings? RVD Jericho. I'm going to give a, a six. Um, maybe six, a, a, seven, a, five. That's probably fair. I'd probably give the noble one six. Right, but anyway, right. We've got Eddie Guerrero backstage. He's been interviewed by uh, Terry Runnels. He's talking. Mamacita, Rick Flair, I'm new. Alright, that, that did not like this promo. Right, I mean, I think Eddie Guerrero was over, overacting big time here. Yeah. You want to see Latino heat, sir? Can I know? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? It's, it's like fucking Rick Flair stole his lawnmower or something. I don't know what the fuck's going on. Ate but... the last fucking burrito or something, man. <laughs> sir. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know. And the match itself was pretty fucking pish, wasn't it? <laughs> It was Ben Wanfold, I forgot the feeling he was, wasn't he? You want a style and profile with Dominic Ric Flair? Whoa! <laughs> no. Down no. This what? match was boring as fuck. Well. Worst it? match of the night, I think. What was the reason for it going 17 minutes? Although the main event was pish as well, like, so it's... But this match, up, up to this point, worst match of the night. And, you Rick can, and Ric Flair beats him? You can shit on Jamie Noble and Hurricane if you want, but I prefer Jamie Noble Hurricane over this. Yeah, no, like, why is Ric Flair getting the second longest match in a match in a feud that's kind of. It means really... fuck all. Yeah. I'm not being funny, like, like but it does. The King of the Ring final gets five minutes. 
But this match gets 17. Ben Wack comes out, starts beating up Flair, referees down. Bubba Ray comes out. I guess this is the impact he wants to make. He gets in the ring. Hits a move on Benoit. Hits a move on Guerrero. He, the move he hits on Guerrero is like literally... Was it the Bubba Bomb? Is it just like the Phil Nelson sit out? I'm going to I'm gonna crack your ass after rape, that. Rape your ass. Yeah, so the, I think he calls that the, the, the Bubba Bomb, right? Uh, and then, But the thing is, he leaves the ring. The referee's down. And then Ric Flair slowly crawls over, puts an arm over... Eddie Guerrero. The referee takes about two minutes to get into position and counts the three. I mean, this was this was like this was, this had a oh Eddie Guerrero's going to kick out at the last second all of it, I didn't. and he didn't. It was like fuck. Yeah, it's not like it, it's not well, like. How, well, how long? How much longer do you want the match to go? No, but it's not like it's not like Taker came out and hit Eddie with a tombstone. It was fucking Bubba came out and hit him with a bubble bomb. No, no disrespect, Bubba Ray Dudley, but when's the bubble bomb put someone down for two minutes? Oh, all it does is give you a sore ass. The tombstone plants you on your head. I think I know what's more believable here. I, I just thought this made Guerrero look weak as fuck. Yeah, and Ric Flair's completely But when does, Bob, when does Bubba Ray ever beat anybody with the Bubba Bum? When he does it off the ladder, it looks pretty good, but he's never pinned anyone. Yeah, <laughs> then, he, then he does it, and two minutes later, fucking Ric Flair puts an arm over Guerrero. Uh, just a bad match. Uh, then, speaking of bad matches, we kind of continue with that. Whoa, with, with Regal and Nowinski back. Whoa, Regal! <laughs> I'm a graduate. They're dining at the world. Right. I mean, I like this world. Uh, what do you call it? The Times Square? Aye, the ti aye. Bring it back. Although they're probably... I mean, who would actually be going out now to like a, an, a public event and actually pretend? Have you noticed that? I've seen you see the people back then, man. They look like cool dudes. They look like people that actually have a life and have got some sort of ambition and would do like manly things. Like, see the people that are at the Times Square? You can imagine that maybe at the next weekend they're at the Steelers and the Ravens. Do you know what I mean? Steelers and the Ravens. You, you can imagine that, right? But see when you look, see when you look at the wrestling crowd today, it legit looks like the next weekend when WWE's not there, they're sitting at home masturbating over My Little Pony. I mean, I mean it is what it is. I That's mean, every it day is. for them. But I, I will. That's what it is. Um, well, uh, Nowinski, he's a bit of a nonce, isn't he? Like, I mean, I, don't, I, I get it, right? He's the first Harvard graduate, like, but that doesn't really do much for me. I mean, I'm so fucking wet. <laughs> so, um, fat ass Molly Holly taking on Trish Stratus again, underwhelming. He basically, yeah, he be, well, Nowinski basically, not all that happened to him, basically kind of like run down the waitress for her because she didn't go to, she apparently she went to some shit place down, down the street. Again, we don't. We're not from America, so we don't understand like what's a a, a high university and which is not like. But she, no, but his gimmick is he went to Harvard. But what goods it got you, mate? Because there's dipshits in the wrestling business that are making more fucking money than you. Like so, what if you went to Harvard? You're a fucking jobber on Raw. Yep. And plus, I mean, you, you can you can actually go. You can go to uni like and and still be an idiot. You you can be like you can be like intelligent but also be dumb it's yeah but look at Austin things. he's supposed to be this fucking tough guy for taxes he's not he's not the smartest in the class but he's the toughest and he makes the most money who gives a fuck about the Harvard or not uh, well I mean literally I, 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 I fuck, pretty much everyone who goes to uni in Belfast is literally a fucking moron yeah I agree with that I, I, going to uni I don't think makes you smart it just indoctrinates you or whatever so but yeah Maybe back in 2002 it was different, who knows. But the, the waitress messes about with his food, I mean... Oh, what do he do? Who gives a shit? It's not quite Jericho pissing in Regal's tea, is it? No, it's, it's not. not. So... Cover piss out, sir. Trish Stratus defending the women's title up next five minutes. Flat match gets beat and it's... It should feel like a bigger moment. Fat it was a has... flat match, unlike Molly's ass. Yep, big fat ass Molly Holly defeating Trish Stratus here. Five minutes. Does this take the cake for the worst match? I like what you've done there. Um, no, I, I mean, I, I still I, think it's Ric Flair. Yeah, I mean, it's Ric Flair. Flair's to lose at this stage. Like. And the next three going, like, I mean, I think Ric Flair's won, I'm afraid. Well, I don't know, the main effect was pretty pissed, right? The rock was so, Molly Holly defeats Trish Stratus. Then we, we go backstage, we speak with Angle. What's Angle got to say for himself? Basically comments on his match with Hulk Hogan. That he's the true American hero. He's going to make Hulk Hogan tap out. And then, yeah, he's going to destroy the big red, white and blue machine, brother. The American Hulk Hogan. 12-minute match. 
I like this match. I honestly feel like this was almost was a match be- of the night. It was better than I expected it to be. Put it that way. Because you know what? Ho- he actually lost clean. And he, and he fucking submitted it. And I thought it was a pretty good visual. It was. He wasn't giving up and then he, his ankle went. But here's here's another thing, right? If Kurt Angle can't get a good match with Hogan... Who the fuck can? Exactly. That's, that's not my logic. Like, so. Shawn um, Michaels written the fucking piss. You know, it was, it was, I thought it was a decent match for Hogan. Like, you know, I mean, I, I think that's what you need. You need to put someone like Kurt Angle with Hogan. I mean, I'm it, sorry, right? But see Hogan, Taker, Hogan, Triple H, you ain't getting a good match. You're, you're just not. Especially Taker. I feel like with Triple H. Triple H was all right with Hogan. They did a good spot in the Battle Royal where they hit the ground at the same time. I'm so, yeah, there you go. I, I, honestly, I, I think they could do that a thousand times and not do that. And Hogan was struggling getting over. Yeah, oh, Smackdown was taped like how many fucking times? Yeah, did he actually, do that's true. <laughs> Couldn't have done that on Raw? Holy fuck. Definitely not. Right, anyway, uh, Kango wins, ankle lock. I'm going to make your ankle heart down, down, down. Um, anyway, we get the uh, King of the Ring final. Bro, whoa, 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 we get the rock. Oh, fuck. Probably the best part of the show. Best part of the show, and you've got the fucking gloss clean over it. So Gold, Goldust is backstage, he's dressed up as The Rock. He still wants to team up with Booker T. He wants to do it. He wants to do it, he's dressed up. We bring the Wabash brother. And he, he's doing all The Rock's taunts, but then The Rock basically tells him... Don't do that! This was a very long segment, but it was... Hard. It was weird, though. It was like The Rock's comeback. I know he already appeared on Raw, but... Booker T seemed seen... depressed. Yeah, he did, didn't he? Booker T seemed like he just didn't want to be there. No, like, should Bo- should, we, should we not have had, like, Booker Take T that against, shirt like, off. Booker T against Kevin Nash or something? Can't even think. Kevin Nash, you're in the field, you have to face the big show. For fuck's sake. Like, what is that, Kevin? Yeah, I mean, I tell you what, that could maybe save... If we had Booker T versus Big Show, that could maybe save Ric Flair for getting worse match than the night. Like, I mean... No, but this was uh, brilliant. Uh, Booker T, The Rock, Gold oh, like, I can't remember every single thing that happened to it, but I mean, it was basically five minutes of The Rock just ripping the piss out of Goldust. So, um... Shut up, you sick freak. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, go and watch it. It was good. It was probably the best part of the pay per view, to be honest. Then we move into Brock Lesnar versus RVD. Bro, uh, no, it's good about this. It's also undisputed championship match at SummerSlam. The first time they've did this. Yeah, when I gets the title shot, makes it feel like a massive deal, in my opinion. Yeah, it was a massive deal. RVD, you know, gets quickly into the match, takes a fight to Brock Lesnar, hits a five star frog splash, but it's not enough. Brock Lesnar kicks out. Um, then the match just kind of finished out of nowhere. RVD springboard after the ropes. Brock Lesnar catches him, hits an F five, and it's all over. It felt really fucking lackluster here. This did not feel like... Yeah, I mean, there finals. was like half a distraction for Heyman, though. Yeah, but... Which kind of delayed Van Damme, but... You could argue this is probably one of Brock Lesnar's most decisive wins. Yeah, and there's no real reason. It just kind of makes Van Damme look a bit weak. Maybe you could argue it's his most decisive win. Because like I said, it's up there with him. I just end. I thought it was flat. Very flat. Yeah, that's what it is. And I get you can argue that both these guys have already wrestled, but that was a lot earlier in the night, and it's not like they did you know, massive fucking matches. I mean, it is, I mean, it is what it is. It wasn't that great. I think Brock Lesnar RVD on paper seems phenomenal, but this match sadly it wasn't. A lot of these King of the Ring matches look good on paper, but and then we get the main so, event no, whoa, before whoa. that. We get the NWO backstage again. Why have we got the NWO and this is the first time we're fucking seeing them? Sorry, I'm skipping over all the... You, all the... You've Michaels and Nash. I don't, I don't, Big Show might have been there. Hey, he was, he, no, he definitely was there because Triple H said something to him. Aye, ah, yeah, Triple H's like, oh, hey, it's good Who? to see my brothers. And, he's and, and this is a big, big boring bastard. Yeah, him, that guy. But yeah, basically, <laughs> Triple H, does, does he join? I hate, I hate the fact he's called G-Money. I know, fuck it, what? And the guy's never drew a dime, like, fucking name money. No, they kind of hint at the fact that Triple H hey, may you, join the NWO here. NWO says, if you need us out there, throw up the, the taunt, throw up the, the two fingers. And uh, Triple H is like, yeah, I'm going to do this on my own. So yeah, the NWO was offering their help for Triple H, is it, um, but he doesn't want is it. Is that with this match needed, maybe, the NWO getting involved, even though I think everyone else getting involved, but the NWO? I think... No, because, I mean, The Rock came out and he was kind of on Triple H's side. 
The NWO came out and they answered, I should say, it's like Taker's very outnumbered. Yeah, no, why was everyone teaming up against Taker? I don't know. <laughs> um, I actually thought this match kind of made Triple H look weak. I thought Undertaker looked pretty strong coming into this. Yeah. The fact that at the end he pretty much had the rock, you know, two and one handicap and he still won. But overall, yeah, the match was just slow, boring. It was weird. It, it was overshadowed by the rocks just standing there and doing a bit of commentary. I don't think Triple H is a good face. I don't. Anytime I see Triple H Taker, normally Taker's the heel, eh, face, and Triple H is the, the heel. I've seen a lot of Triple H Taker matches. This might be my least, I think this is my least favourite, by far my least favourite. I mean, the three WrestleMania matches are better. Absolutely. And I'm sure they had better ones in 2001 after Mania. Um, but I'm just trying to think. It was like, I can never remember this match. And they had one before, they had one a couple months ago, did they not? Remember, like, was it, was it No Way Out, maybe? Maybe No Way Out. I can't remember when it... Was it no Way Out? can't remember what it was, but... Uh, I, just, I just do feel like... It might, it might have been the build-up to 2002 Rumble. might have been then. Might have been. Oh. might have been then, but... Taker wins, but... Uh, it's like, yeah, you're right. Like, Triple H... Like, Triple H gets busted open. And, like... He literally... Like, the last 10 minutes of this match is Triple H just... Take getting up and hit, getting hit by a move, and then it's like the Rock and Taker going at it. And the Rock, there was in this awkward part where the Rock kind of left the ring and just stood up at the top of the ramp for like five minutes, <laughs> and he didn't fucking leave I know. until Taker won, just so Taker could look up at the ramp and see the Rock. Then the Rock comes back down and fights with Taker, and then hits a hits a rock bottom on Taker, and then turns around, Triple H hits a pedigree on the rock and tells him to suck it and then Triple H turns around and Taker's right back up and hits a choke slam on Triple H and Taker ends King of the Ring way. Very weird. Lackluster ending the King of the Ring. Uh, yeah, I mean, I can't believe... I'm, I'm going to give it a 5, I'm sorry. A 5 out of 10 for me. I didn't enjoy it. That's yeah, not I'm, the, I'm not in the match, that's the uh, overall... That's yeah, the overall it's, a, it's a 5. Like, what would you give the match? 4 or something? Ah, uh, it wasn't good, yeah. I mean, I'd probably give us a 4. Nick Vinny Max? Uh, I'd probably give us a 4. Holly and Trish, I'd probably give like a 3. Flair and Guerrero, maybe even give that 2. Um, RVD, Brock, I'd maybe give like a 3 or a 4. I mean, I know we said it didn't start great, but I actually think... It did. Well, it started good. <laughs> it started bad and got worse. I mean, normally, you know, it's... Anyway, right, we're getting at a 5 out of 10. It's not often I shit this hard on, like... I, I, but the last I, couple of weeks have been concerning. Then something needs to happen, right? Ruthless aggression. The last couple of Raws and Smackdowns haven't been that great, followed by this pay-per-view. And it's no surprise, in my opinion, that Vinny Mac's going to be out in the next night on Raw and, you know, be in the ring, call everyone to the ring, because I think Vinny Mac can see that the product... Is... Shit! Damn it!